through understanding this morning how I am inherently connected to my my reality and reality field and what I project and my attitude and um, my resonance I guess with others and interactions and things I'm discovering that this is a really good way to understand how God is inherently connected to us and his creation or her <laughs> that's the Christian slant there that I'm still living with I guess I think it, it's a really good opportunity if, of um, when we start taking initiative of our world and KS calls it the hologram. Maybe that's how it all works too, you know, maybe it works by uh, when we start to establish a stronger connection with God. There's a saying that I haven't really heard that much that I heard a lot when I first came into chaos, and there's actually abbreviations for it. My relationship with God comes first. M-R-W-G-C-F. And that used to be everywhere. I used to see it everywhere and would ask people what that means and I gradually got more accustomed to it. Like, wow, this is really what it's all about. That is what it's all about. That's what I'm gradually starting to learn for myself, that that is the ultimate experience to have here. And I don't think that you can have one without the other. I could be wrong. <laughs> I mean, I have been in some pretty dark spots where I I believe that I established a stronger connection with God through prayer. I think prayer is extremely important to have that and to utilize that when we need to for ourselves. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, for me it feels like just the natural symbi symbiotic relationship to that establishes the connection with God, just owning your, your own reality. How, I guess kind of stepping into the frame of like how God would see the creation here. Is there bits and pieces that he wants to exclude and say you're, not, you're vaccinated so you can't, <laughs> you know? Or any of these debates hang on. So the more that I grow and the more that I acquire new experiences and interactions. I'm seeing that it, uh, God really does have a connection with all of, all of God's reality. Um, there's no exclusion. And it takes a long time to really get to that point of understanding. And I think I'm just now Kind of coming into the myself through uh, just holding more integrity, holding. Um, I don't like uh, I'm trying to find different word than higher. You know, the higher thing isn't doesn't have a good ring to it these days. <laughs> higher and lower. We've got to find some new ways of expressing some of these things. Uh, I'll just say more expansive. I was going to say higher standard. And I guess that's applicable without sounding too arrogant or whatever. But yeah, a more expansive template for myself, my reality. You know, not allowing projections, not allowing energies that go against what I've set for myself as far as self-respect, self-love. And it's a pretty tight path, you know. There's not all that many that are walking a, a very sovereign path, it seems, these days. They're starting to. They're starting to. So there is a lot of change that's happening, but there hasn't, it hasn't been this way other than, you know, kingdoms and uh, royal lines and stuff. They know all about sovereignty and countries and 
sovereign countries and stuff, but we haven't really done it for ourselves. Um, but I, yeah, I do think that we are in the midst of great change right now. And part of this video, again, I've mentioned in other videos how Shu inspires a lot of these dialogues. Uh, Shu Wong, he's becoming a very enjoyable uh, friend to talk with, you know, conversations, very enlightening. And we kind of ping off each other in uh, the different views and things and polarities that are happening around us right now. And we're, we're both kind of standing on different sides of things too, so it's really good to kind of meet in the middle and uh, see why we're standing on different, different ends of the spectrum here. So, thank you, Shu. <laughs> I've been quoting him a lot, actually. Um, quoting, posting, reposting. And the spirit of our conversation stays in other conversations. So I, I really appreciate that. But as I begin to, you know, have both hands on the wheel more in life, and know what my standard is for myself, what I will allow, what I won't allow, I understand more of the nature of fall, I guess, and how fall is allowed to happen, because even though God loves all of all of God's creation, I'm not going to say his or hers anymore, it's to say God. There is always uh, allowance for free will, even if free will takes you further away from uh, God's organic, natural creation, I guess. But even that kind of gets divisive when you talk about organic. Uh, our split mind just wants to keep dicing and splitting. In truth, it is all organic, although it's it can be emotionally difficult to find acceptance of that. For a lot of us, you know, we see things just extremely polarized these days, and it's only getting more polarized as we go. Although, and this is some of the conversations I'm having with Shu, there has been a new approach to the polarization that's taken place. There are people that uh, the subjects of revolution and evolution that Shu was sharing with me is a fascinating subject actually. It really left me with lots of kind of uh, roll around and feel out. The revolution is actually uh, kind of like a schism, you know, it's just, uh, it's the act of just repeating ourselves over and over through history and, you know, toppling things down to rebuild them again. Well, that's not healing when you're coming from a place of, as she puts it, the conflict, the inner conflict that's taking place inside of us. We have to heal before we try to rebuild or else what we are re rebuilding will continue to collapse for whatever reason, whether it's this side that is wrong or that side that is that is right. Whichever side we stand on, it's, it's like a false stand. And these are some of the concepts and things that I'm gradually starting to integrate for myself, my own reality as I become passionate about my views and where I stand on vaccine, on the mask, on what my son is going through in school, and more looking at myself and my inner conflict of things, of why I am put off by this when there's other people that clearly need to do this to feel comfortable for themselves and need to take a vaccine, they need to wear a mask 
and I am starting to see the ult ultimate. <laughs> I think I think the direction, and again, I'll say expansive. You know, not higher, not use these words, but I think the the ends that were kind of destined to me to break this cycle of revolution and build, just kind of destroying and then rebuilding and just building again is ultimately going to involve uh, acknowledgement that there is inner conflict and that will allow for healing, it will allow for the choice for us to choose to heal or not and I think more and more and this is what I've been presenting to Shu is that I, I see that that is becoming available that there is a, a choice an option a Christic option in my opinion what Christic is Christic for me implies the way back home and our connection to God to eternal life of what what is you know the Bible when I was growing up in church I heard the word birthright a lot and I think that that's probably appropriate our original birthright that's kind of been in so many words hijacked throughout history and it's not too hard to really examine history and see how we've we really have been kind of stuck in a time loop of this revolution idea it's taken me a while to see it in my own life as I set the standards of what I allow in and what I do not allow in and I hold the same standard for my groups that I run on Facebook and Telegram and uh, the BitTube channels and etc. I actually just recently kind of learned something that, was, that I was kind of in conflict about trying to more, more or less trying to figure out if this was the right approach or the right standard to set for the groups. And I'm, I'm getting some confirmation that yes, I believe it is. Because recently I've had to, and it seems like the case whenever I, I need to block somebody and they're static or things being projected upon me or my children, um, somebody's fears while they're in a clearing cycle and they just start to project and say oh well this is right for me and now it needs to be right for you too and you need to do this and that and they become aggressive about it and this is a reoccurring <laughs> actually I just recently experienced it again come to think about it in a relationship but whenever these things are amped and charged against me I usually have to take action if they're in my groups or having anything to do with what I am a part of, it usually begins to outpicture in the groups also. So as unusual as it, it has kind of been for me to see that and see how connected I am to these groups energetically, you know, it's, it's taken me some time to kind of put that together. The, I kind of I hold a standard for myself as I do that I I need to hold it for my creations also seeing that in life when something's kind of coming at you and how you respond to it I think is getting more and more it, it's just increasingly important how we hold ourselves through that you know to allow a space of grace for ourselves and for others for the energies coming at us whether they be from a black hole system or a man-made virus or whatever it is on all levels to kind of pause and even examine. You know, I feel AI is very examine -y, so maybe we can adopt that for ourselves and kind of set it down on the shelf gently, pause, not judge, not say, not peg something for what we first What's that saying? Uh, first impressions, right? First impressions go a long way, very important. So, yeah, just kind of wanted to share that. I feel like I'm, I'm 
I've, I've been wanting to get there to that point of making my connection with God first and starting to understand how this is really, this is the symbiosis of God and God's creation, of how God has allowed all of us to view or uh, handle or perceive each other and life itself and everything that life is about here. It's a very fluid process that happens as you naturally evolve. And I've, I've been saying more and more in the videos that the Christic standard is all life everywhere. It's in our prayer, it's in uh, modules, and workshops, it's in our affirmations, the vows. We always kind of uh, grace the end of our statements and our, our solemn affirmations and prayers with it for all life everywhere. It's kind of like an amen. And that, as subtle as it is sometimes in, this, in these teachings, is becoming one of the highest priorities in my life, my existence, and understanding that, and not holding grudges, and my attitude, you know, with work, and people around me, how I perceive others, you know, how I'm, I'm quick to judge sometimes. I'll be having a bad week, or a bad day, and then it turns into a bad week, or a bad month, <laughs> bad life. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, I'm just getting back from vacation and yesterday was my first day back and the workflows were just like incredible. And I noticed how it was different than my last readjustment from vacation where I was kind of more resentful, like, oh, I gotta come back. And it was more in appreciation and almost like, let's see how well I can really do because I'm kind of in a process of, of uh, starting a new job and I'm in this mode of like comparing how well this job is and I, I keep being told that I'm going to do a lot better at this new job but I'm like well let's max out this one and see you know let's see what I'm really capable of and this time coming back to work it was uh, I just slowed down and I, I wasn't rushing like to hurry and it helped a lot you know, they say like the slow and steady wins the race. It was uh, really unusual and I've, I've been in these flows before where you go slower and you're achieving more. So it's actually saving you time. And that's, that's the flows that I got in yesterday and I had one of my best days. I did really good and I feel like I'm kind of riding with that today. Today was a little bumpy when you're rewiring the circuitry it's like there's some things that are kind of sparking and you got to make sure the connections are good and it's literally what's happening in our brains. So it started off pretty bumpy this morning, but I remembered. I remembered that feeling of yesterday and just to slow down, even when I was late, even when I was late and I was late a couple of times, I was really tested. There was orders that were late, I was late on my own circumstance, not just the restaurants. We're kind of getting, taking too many orders kind of, but then I started realizing, you know, I picked up from this last restaurant that inspired me to make this video. The lady came out and it was a real small order. And I was thinking, I, I had to wait. Like I waited five minutes. I, was, I kept looking at the order like, this is really small and it's showing that it's been ready. But it was one of these orders where you can't, the restaurants don't let you go in, they have you wait. And so I had to wait. <laughs> and obviously I'd called them to let them know I was, I was there. And when the lady came out and handed it to me, it was just like a sandwich. She was just kind of puzzled. She's like, I don't know why you had to wait so long. Um, she was an older lady and she transmitted something to me. And I picked it up and I started realizing, I know, I know why because I'm projecting this into my reality. And I was seeing it from the previous orders, you know, that uh, things were kind of pushing on me a little, you know, that I, the normal route of gotta hurry, gotta go, gotta get in this rush, wasn't, wasn't really working. 
You know, most people probably are probably familiar if they're listening to this video into KS and stuff are probably familiar with the butterfly effect. Also familiar with, uh, what is that guy's name? Okamaru. I think the study of water, how energy affects water. Of course, we're composed of water. Law of attraction is really big. Being in the zone <clears throat> is in some of the uh, really good movies, Soul about being in the zone shows that we kind of float up to heaven when we're in the zone all these people that that are like in heaven while they're in the zone so things like this i think people are starting to gradually catch on with uh, some of the concepts of that we really do affect our reality by our composure and by what we carry in ourselves and what we project ourselves and how we respond and react and this is starting to become more and more of a intricate and very subtle level to be aware of and to notice in myself you know that yeah I can do good at something I can work really hard and go fast and really hustle the word hustle is starting there's some words that are starting to get eliminated from my vocabulary lately it's recently in some conversations about fighting need to fight, hustle, try to, I mean, I'm not discounting people's journeys and what they, where they're at, where they need to be at to get, get to a greater expansion and standard for themselves, but I'll speak to my own journey that I, I have been in that spot before where I did need to hustle, I did need to push, I did need to fight, and there's no denying that these times will come up for us. This is uh, the circumstantial environment, I think it's the word, you know, the circumstances of our environment that we live in. So we can't just pretend these things away. But I will say that as life, as I am holding both hands on the wheel in life more, more so, it is becoming more apparent that there is not as much of the need to push or to um, fight or to hustle or try to hurry up and make money you know especially with this job it's it's very apparent uh, there are a few elements involved of course at the restaurants and employees at the restaurants how long we're having to wait etc uh, people are feeling like ordering if it's busy there's quite a few variables in this business which I which intrigues me. I think it's really, it, it keeps things from getting stagnant, you know, and it keeps me in check with my own energy flows of where I'm at because I have to adjust accordingly. And right now it's been very steady, so there's like no excuse not to make money, but it's like how do I want to establish my flows, of my cash flows, my, you know, survival, stability, paying the bills and everything how do I want to go about doing that and I think we could also look at that with our own energetic flows who we are as a person and how we hold ourselves and how we move through life I believe that the times of struggle and times times of sorrow the era of sorrows are moving away from us now and it's almost like there's, there's almost jokes you know these memes that come up it's funny the kids are educating me on some of this stuff like the Karens you know Karens at the Walmart complaining about something or wear your mask or or uh, don't wear your mask it, there's Karens on all sides how it, and getting triggered it's another cool word you know to look at that we we use a lot uh, it's it's almost like um, laughing at people that are uh, suffering or some, something that's bothering them and we think it's laughable because we've already maybe integrated the experience and can see how we ourselves are silly when we're triggered <laughs> and just how silly it is and I think that's kind of a sign of, of some of this uh, notion that we're moving past this this age of sorrow and um, just pitiful ways of existing that we we really have a lot to be thankful for and 
we should appreciate life and not be Karens. <clears throat> and uh, some of it's not laughable. Some of it is very serious. And that should also be acknowledged that there, we are, <laughs> we're not out yet. We're not, not by a long shot. Of course, you know, there's a lot of suffering that's happening around us and uh, the division is, suffering is kind of rooted from the division which really shows how naturally connected of the, of the species that we are, that humans are, that we need to be connected. And if we're not, then we're suffering and it's painful and it hurts and that, that goes for any any subject you know that's happening around us right now you can look throughout history of course uh, how there's uh, I'm not going to go too far into the, it being agenda and this is another thing that's starting to reconfigure my brain my vocabulary is the use of the word agenda not to say that there is not obvious agenda and things happening but in my evolution right now it's become less of a focus and more of a, a byproduct. And I, I believe that we do need to have acknowledgement that we've created this environment that we live in collectively. And but yes, there are ill intended, intended motives and things taking place around us, but also to take it a step further and try to identify the roots of where that conflict arises from within us instead of like oh it's big government so oh, it's the corruption or it's this and that whenever I start to hear these things I start to, to or I start to feel these things against somebody or something it's usually a good opportunity for me to reverse it and look at this in myself and question where my conflict is with this particular subject or this uh, situation that we are collectively in right now and that that's leading back to Shu's point that we're kind of lost in this myriad of or this like this labyrinth that we had to go through to discover that and discover that it's only real change is only going to happen through healing and the illusion of revolution that really kind of rhymes illusion of revolution really keeps us back from that because we're anticipating, we're feeding it, we are really a lot of adrenaline, you know, a lot of energy, a lot of manifestation energy that we're directing outside of ourselves, externally towards a belief, an ideology, political way of, of living, which is kind of what it's, it's been for our, our country at least. It's been extremely split with uh, Democrats, Republicans, conservative, liberal. But a lot of that is getting, it's really the bifurcation thing, you know, it's really come up for us to look at and gives us the space to make choices now. And I'm seeing different choices. I, I'm seeing it with in our medical industry with uh, a post a friend made the other day on her story about the nurses that are walking out because they're being told to get vaccinated and these nurses not not because they're afraid of the the vaccine but because of what is happening with the simple fact that there can be a mandate to enforce to affect your job and to enforce this this uh, whatever it may be that you have to do this or you can't work because I am a healthcare worker I've been in my profession for almost 20 years none of you probably know what I do um, I run the heart-lung bypass machine, open-heart surgery. There's two of us in this town. We were both in this room today. When we can't show up for work, the hospital goes on diversion, which means the ER can't take critical patients and the helicopters fly right over us. Neither one of us are getting this vaccine. Neither one of us are willing to take that because we know what's on stake, at stake for freedoms past that. I've alternated between, should I just keep providing for my family? Should I take the job and just keep getting my paycheck? I'll take it for the team. If I die, at least they'll get provision for as long as it takes until I may or may not have symptoms. But then I'm like, no, that can't happen because if I fold here, I don't know what's gonna happen. 
I'm here because the board of supervisors is failing, other than Patrick. Um, closely related to the recall. I support it 100%. If I don't show up for my job, as I just explained to you, people die. On Saturday night at 10 p.m., I got a page. I did not want to go to work. Somebody was having a very critical problem. They were dying. I worked until 6 a.m. the next day. If I had not have showed up, there would have been nobody to do my job. These guys can't show up their job, and I'm sorry, your jobs are not as important as mine. So I'm not here for recognition. You'll never remember what a perfusionist is after this. Maybe you will. I don't like being in front. I do like supporting. I'm really good at supporting. But my encouragement is that all of you have the power that I'm talking about to stand up and to be the voice when you think you don't. You're more valuable than you think you are. And the team that I work with at both hospitals in this town feel very strongly and very similar. And if this mandate goes through, and these people don't show up for work, then people are gonna start dying for other reasons. And it's because there's gonna be nobody to take care of. And to me, I, I believe that that is moving more away from the split-sidedness of it being a debate about the vaccine, and <clears throat> more about the inner conflict, addressing the inner conflict, in my opinion. And I believe that's, that's a, a new choice that we're making instead of revelation, revolution choice, you know, like, oh, there needs to be a revolution and we need to fight against this and we need to burn it down, burn it down, <laughs> you know, like, let's, let's put away the flamethrowers, put away the torches and pitchforks. We've already done this. We've already done this. And I really thank you for redirecting me towards our previous history in that do we really want to do this again it's a false evolution chaos is talking about re-evolution right now um, i'm gonna need to look up the other r's there's other r's to that i used to know it <laughs> used to actually people were asking me what it was and i was telling them but uh re-evolution re-alignment maybe re-something but Maybe I'll, I'll make a production thing out of this. It feels like I'm touching on some good subjects here. But it is. It, it, there's some obstacles here in our way of uh, perceiving and our way of, of all of us co-creating what's happening right now and what we're going to do with this. You know, it, it feels almost like the calm before the storm and people are kind of threatening and saying, well, if the nurses aren't going to show up, people aren't going to be at work, the system's going to fall apart, people are going to be dying. Uh, there will be probably riots and people getting very upset. I go back to Australia also on some of this. Uh, there's another calm before the storm. There are lawsuits and things being filed. And this is another thing that where I stand on one side of the polarity with Shu and pointing out that Yes, there does need to be action taken, I believe, and that it's kind of, it, there's elements of both that are happening right now. Um, if we did, we did just allow our, our rights and our freedoms to get trampled upon, there wouldn't be the opportunity to make a better choice. And I think that it's kind of putting the cart in front of the horse, it's looking at this kind of in this passive, no offense shoe, but like in a, my opinion, it, it feels very passive to say that we just need to heal, you know, and there doesn't need to be action. Well, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling as a human being, hearing other human beings' stories, their lives being impacted, their children's lives being impacted, my own kids, psychologically, yes, there does need to be action. But where is the action coming from? You know, what is driving that action aside from you can't take this away from me, is that you can't take this away from me, now I'm going to revolt, <laughs> and now there's a revolution. This is really what's happening right now, is we are defining our stand as humans. We're defining where we stand, and what kind of environment we want to stand in. If, if we 
enjoy martial law and are okay with it for the sake of a pandemic and the spread of this virus and I'll sacrifice my rights and so be it. If people feel that this is just a big agenda out to get them and they need to revolt or take action against this way of life or not, maybe not take action, but just feel that inside, but, but don't have the wherewithal, don't have the courage to go outside of their house and protest. These are all elements to this of what we're defining our existence right now, of who we are, who we're going to be, you know. And it goes back to the Christic Districts video that I made. I personally believe that we're molding a foundation for levels of DNA activation on parts of in countries and areas of our world of where some people are feeling and not to get in different sides of this but there's evolution and all of this I think I believe re-evolution but I, I've shared before my visions of this reoccurring place that I visit in, in my dreams of uh, these districts where you know, this one area people can fly and probably other stuff too. You know, if you're, you're able to fly, you're probably you're like Neo in the Matrix type thing. But it's not a Matrix. There's other places where people can't fly and they're developing activation to where they can levitate and do some telekinesis, things of that nature, you know, more subtle. And But they are separated. And that is my main point. I don't know how all this is going to go together with the current times and debates and everything. And, you know, people that are in lockdown versus people that are not in lockdown, etc. I have no idea. And I, I don't, there's not enough that's really connected with that for me to see that. But I do feel that there are, I'm acquiring evidence pretty rapidly in this. It's been pretty incredible to see uh, because I, I've talked to people. I uh, recently did an interview with Dr. Paul Terriel on some of the subjects that I'm talking about, the vaccine and COVID, and I tend to agree with him on a lot of it, on his outlook about how some of this has kind of gone too far with the conspiracies revolved around this. It's just really hard for me to bring myself to accept that all of our doctors are are programmed and mind washed, mind controlled or brainwashed into into this. Now there is some debate, obviously, with doctors and nurses. It kind of goes back to the divisiveness of, of us being separated and so divided right now. You know, are some not speaking up because they know that they need to maintain the establishment, and even though it is corrupt or there's just, there's a lot of, a lot that goes into this. And you could say the same about the bags. Like, are some just conforming? Um, obviously the kids don't have a choice, but are some people, adults, conforming just to, you know, for their job or for their family or, you know, whatever it may be. Or just because of the, the amount of pressure that's taking place with these mandates. And, I'm not going to lie, it's something that's really, that came on the table for me to look at right after the announcement of that, I was like, okay, but I kind of slowed down and looked at it, I'm like, I'm an independent contractor, they can't enforce it on me yet, but it is a possibility that, you know, since working with the public as much as I do, and food delivery, and about to be even more with the public soon, with the new jobs. This is a real possibility that I need to look at. You know, it's kind of closing in. And how am I going to respond to that? You know, emotionally and mentally and looking at this. Do I have a lot of fears about it? Is, um, is it gonna affect my DNA? You know, is it gonna cripple me or am I gonna have all these weird symptoms? Am I gonna die? <laughs> you know, these are thoughts that are going through people's heads uh, right now that are on the, on the bandwagon of it not being such a good thing. 
and all this being an agenda against them. And this is more the what I'm learning, the byproducts of the inner conflicts of our society and the division. So I think that's all that I have to say about it, just kind of sharing some of my insights. And once again, Xu, Xu Wong, thank you for the conversations and the insights. And as my journey unfolds, I'm just more and more in gratitude and thankfulness that there are the friends that are in my life, that are around me, that are there to talk when I need to talk and dialogue and sort things out. And of course, everybody that's kind of following this thread of videos here. All right, please feel free to share the comments, your views and experiences with this, these subjects. And I know that we're gonna make it through this passage. I feel like I've already seen some of the outcome for myself and not to project it onto others, but it makes perfect sense for, for myself and the path that I'm on. And I feel like I've acquired enough evidence to know that inside with my inner conflicts of where I'm going and what kind of outcome that I've, I'm going to reach for myself. And if I was to wish anything on anyone else, that would probably be it. It's just for you to have your, your own clarity of where you're going and status of inner conflict, <laughs> a, a reality check of your own inner conflicts, and how how uh, they can stick onto the external conflicts taking around us very easily, almost interlocking perfectly. You guys take care. I love you.